Hi, welcome to our talk, Survival Gun, Generating Time to Event Data for Survival Analysis. I'm Alex Norcliffe, and I did this work with Bogdan Chebere, Fergus Imri, Pietro Leo, and Michaela van der Schaar. We're at the University of Cambridge, except for Fergus, who's at UCLA. The context we're looking at is survival analysis, where we ask the question, given the condition of a subject right now, how long will it be before an event of interest happens? For example, given a car's current condition, how long before mechanical failure? Or given a company's current condition, how long before bankruptcy? Or given a patient's current condition, how long before we might expect a death? Survival analysis is highly impactful. This paper showed that when studying defendants in the US who are sentenced to death, if they were to remain under sentence, at least 4.1% would have been exonerated. And so we can see that this is a highly impactful area of study. Given these models impact, we want to train them with the highest quality data we can get, but we also need to respect privacy. One solution is using synthetic data, where we create fake data that mirrors these statistical properties of the real data without any real subjects being in the data. This can also tackle bias, robustness, and data democracy. A key element of survival analysis is censoring. This is when we don't know if the event has happened or not. For example, a patient recovers or a study ends. So at time t, the subject has been censored. <clears throat> but why use censored data? It's still informative. We know the event has not happened before to this time. And we also know that censored data is often more abundant than non-censored data. Data instances in survival analysis appear as x, t, and e. x is the initial condition or the covariate. T is the time and E is the event, uh, which are given by integers. Zero being no event, where i.e. censoring, and one the event of interest. <clears throat> we can extend the integers uh, to include competing events, depending on the scenario. One, key, uh, one further key element of survival analysis that we need to consider are survival curves. These are also known as Kaplan-Meier plots, and they show the probability of surviving up to a given time, or the proportion of the population that has survived up until that point. Use these Kaplan-Meier curves to demonstrate the failure modes. So when generating synthetic survival data, we saw three common failure modes. Being overly optimistic, where we predict a patient surviving too long or censoring too late, that's given by the bottom left graph, where the orange synthetic curve survival curve doesn't, de doesn't uh, decrease fast enough compared to the blue real curve. We can be over overly pessimistic, which is the opposite, where we predict a patient dying too early or censoring too early, uh, i.e. The, the orange curve is decreasing too fast. Or we can be short-sighted where all events are just too early. So the orange curve simply ends too early compared to the blue curve, which is the bottom right. And so to quantify these, these three phenomena, we propose these three new metrics. The first being optimism, which is the signed area between the true survival curve and the synthetic one. Uh, this is also equal to the uh, a scale difference in the expected lifetimes. Uh, so uh, zero is perfect, whereas one is uh, maximally optimistic and minus one is maximally pessimistic. Uh, and yes, this can be covered. This can be used to quantify both over-optimism and pessimism. The next one is short-sightedness, which is used to quantify short-sightedness. Uh, and this is the scale difference between the two end times. And then finally, both optimism and short-sightedness can both be zero, but the survival curves might not match, in which case we use the Kaplan-Meier divergence, which gives us the total absolute difference between these two curves. The next thing that we that we did was we created a model to generate this synthetic survival data known as survival GAN. This works around the GAN framework, where we feed a condition to a generator so we can choose whether we have censored data or not, uh, so that we can mirror the statistical properties. And we then use a traditional time to event model to predict the time given the covariate. And so this is the full model with the full training. So the first part is we train the GAN, uh, a conditional GAN to generate the covariate. Uh, and this is a Wasserstein GAN. 
We then train a survival function. So given, given a set of times and a, a covariate, this will predict the survival function. And then finally, both of these are used as input to a time to event regressor, uh, which takes in the covariate and the times and then predicts this time to event. And then to generate synthetic survival data, we take a condition and put it into the conditional generator. This gives us uh, a covariate. And then we get we uh, we then use the survival function and the covariate with the time regressor to predict a time. And finally, we take the event, and this gives us a synthetic sample. On to our experiments. We consider five baselines. Uh, ADS GAN, CT GAN, TVAE, priv bays, and normalizing flows. And we looked at five medical data sets AIDS, which looks at HIV, CUTRACT looks at prostate cancer, SEER looks at prostate cancer, Metabrick looks at breast cancer, and BHEART was a private heart data set. The first thing we look at is the quality of the covariate marginal. The aim here was to check that survival GAN does not perform significantly worse than the other models. However, since this isn't the main aim, we don't expect it to perform better. Here we use two traditional metrics uh, to, to uh, assess this. And we see that uh, survival GAN is occasionally the best performing model. However, it's, uh, it's never noticeably worse. And that's, how, that's what we expected. Next, we assess the time and event marginal using our three new metrics. Uh, and we see in optimism, survival gun is often the most, uh, the best, uh, and or close to the best. Uh, in terms of KM, uh, KM divergence, we get the same. And then finally, for short sightedness, it's not usually the best. However, uh, it's not significantly failing. Uh, and in, in this point, we underline the significant failure modes, uh, which were ADS GAN, CT GAN, and TVA on the heart data set. We then want to evaluate the, uh, the joint distribution of the covariate, the time, and the event. And to do this, we assess the downstream performance of our models. And so we train our models on real training data these create synthetic data sets, which are then used to train time, uh, used to train survival models, which are then tested on held out test data. Uh, we assess these with the uh, the C index and the Brier score, uh, and we see that survival GAN is uh, consistently the best performing model. Finally, we look at some qualitative results uh, to to test our, our model. On the left is survival GAN, and on the right are the other baselines. Uh, in the top, we have these T-SNE plots to show how good are the generated covariates, and they, they match the real data uh, as well as the baselines. And then on the second lines of each of these, we have the, uh, we have the Kaplan-Meier plots, and we can see that the synthetic survival curve matches the real curve best for survival GAN compared to the baselines. So in summary, survival analysis is concerned with how long a subject can be expected to survive given their current condition. In order to respect privacy, we want to train survival models with synthetic data. There are three main failure modes, over-optimism, over-pessimism, and short-sightedness. We introduced three new metrics to quantify these, known as optimism, short-sightedness, and mean absolute difference or KM divergence. We introduced the model survival GAN to tackle this synthetic generation problem. And we saw that the model outperformed the baselines. We look forward to seeing your AI stats and answering your questions. We'll be in Auditorium 1, Foyer 11, on Thursday, the 27th of April, 1 p.m. Here are the links to the GitHub and the poster and the archive. And special thanks to our funders. Thank you.